Tonight on Chimsock Africa, my guest is Professor Gary Maxey, an American who has made Nigeria his home since 1982. Gary Maxey is the founder of the West Africa Theological Seminary, as well as the senior pastor of the New Beginning Church in Lagos. We sit down to discuss one of his books, Capturing a Lost Vision, Can Nigeria's Greatest Revival Live Again? And we look at a subject that is bound to reignite a hunger for true revival in in the heart of everyone tonight on Jim's Talk Africa. But before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Jim's Talk Africa. Now, here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of your show. I'm Chim Onyibilanma, your host. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my guest today, as I said in the introduction, is Professor Gary Maxwell, and we're going to discuss a book that has gotten me steered up for more of Don't Go Away. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back. Uh, my guest, Professor Gary Maxell, is the founder of the West Africa Theological Seminary and is the author of the book we want to look at today, Capturing a Lost Vision, Can Nigeria's Greatest Revival Live Again? Professor Gary, you're welcome to the show. He's joining me via Zoom from Nigeria. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Professor Gary, I couldn't put down this book. Uh, for those don't know, who don't know, the Nigerian Civil War, the revival you talk about in this book is the revival that is referred to as the Civil War Revival in Nigeria. The Nigerian Civil War happened between 1967 and 1970. And towards the end of that Civil War, so we're around 1968, 69, up to way into the 70s, there was a phenomenal move of God, which has come to be known as the Civil War Revival, or some people call it the Scripture Union revival because of the role that the Scripture Union organization played uh, uh, during this time. But it was a phenomenal uh, event. It was something that went on for almost a decade. It was something that had to do with uh, deep convictions of sin, people crying out in repentance, clear teaching of the simple teaching of the gospel, and people getting saved, not just mass into the church, but radical transformation, holiness. And it is about this that you talk about in this book. You know, it, it, it just teared my heart to see an authentic move of God, not just large gathering. Tell me, Dr. Gary, why did you write this book? Well, thank you. I've always been fascinated by revivals and I've had experiences right from my youth and in being involved in dynamic revivals. And when I got to know over the years that the Civil War revival was the closest that Nigeria has ever come to a national revival, even though it didn't fully become that, I became very curious to know, you know, how did this originate? What was it like? And, uh, you know, why did it last as long as it did? Or on the other hand, why did it uh, fade uh, when it did? So I, that's what drove me to called together 13 uh, active participants in that revival and interview them, and the book came out from that. Professor Gary, tell, tell us a bit about how this revival came about. Well, look, the, the tide had been building over several years, especially through the Scripture Union, and uh, to a large degree, we owe them credit for having uh, taught, uh, especially in schools, but also entire families about scripture, about uh, memorizing of scripture, etc. Uh, and also, um, Dr. Mike Oye told me at one point that uh, the dissemination of the herald of his coming was, uh, was key because it was uh, uh, stories and uh, advocacies for revival from the great revivalists of the past. And as a result, in the early to mid-60s, at the beginning at the University of Ibadan, 
uh, there was an extremely strong move toward revival. I will say also aided and abetted by British lecturers who had specifically come to Nigeria, not simply to teach in the universities, but to promote Christianity and revival. And God used that to just begin a, an awesome first of its kind revival in this country. You, you know, something I loved about this book, uh, Professor Gary, is the uh, first person accounts that you got from the many people you interviewed who were eyewitnesses to this revival. The, their stories were so faith inspiring. Tell us some of those stories. Well, look, the, uh, a man like Mike Oye, whom I've just mentioned, uh, was born again in 1962. He came over from Ghana, where he had grown up, uh, having just been born again and quickly moved into a leadership within the student Christian environment there at the University of Ibadan. And it wasn't long before prayer broke out uh, and people began to repent. Uh, at the same time in the East, or maybe a little bit later, you have people like Bill Roberts who had become uh, the major leader of the Scripture Union and who chose to stay behind after the Civil War broke out, he, uh, at Omwaiha, uh, remarkably, became the head of a, of a Christian movement. I mean, nobody thought, hey, we're going to start a revival here. They were just seeking the face of God during a time of stress. And uh, that's what began to happen in various parts of the East, even during the Civil War revival. So it broke out in, in more than one place. What were the qualities of this revival? Very good. You know, what distinguished this revival is that uh, it was not like the preceding revivals, for example, under Garrick Braid in the second decade of the, uh, of the century, or later on in the third and fourth decades under the prophetic healing revival in the Aladara movement. Those revivals focused or were centered largely around uh, healing. Uh, we call them the prophetic healing revivals. Totally unlike that, the Civil War revival was, was focused on, number one, genuine repentance of lost sinners. Uh, the preaching of a simple salvation message in which people were deeply moved to confess their sins and forsake their old life and become new believers. Uh, so there was an emphasis on exalting Christ, on preaching the Word of God, preaching the you know historic and biblical salvation message. And uh, there was also a, a strong focus on the second coming of Christ, uh, that we need to be prepared because Jesus is coming soon. So these were, it was a genuine, classical, uh, let me call it evangelical awakening with the preaching of the gospel and evangelism at the forefront. You know, I'm afraid that some people listening to us might not understand what we're talking about here when we use the word revival, because today in the church, almost everything is called a revival. We think of mass gathering, some miracles and this and that, and a big evangelistic meeting. But this thing, this revival that you wrote about here that happened in the 70s in Nigeria was, is, it wasn't just a, a large gathering of people or big churches it was something deep, a, a revelation of God's holiness. Let me read something from the book, which will capture what happened then. Uh, this is from page 99, uh, the chapter called Foot Soldiers, West, Western Nigeria. From beginning to end, the gathering was marked by a deep sense of conviction for sin. As people broke out with strong cries, lamentation and confession of sin, and then also amidst the anguish of those Christ came copious tears of joy as people found peace in Christ and forgiveness of sin. From all around town, charms and fetishes were surrendered and occult literature was brought out and burned publicly. Wow, this is just like a page from the Acts of Apostles. Deep conviction of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Gary, this is what we need today. What do you say? No, exactly. I mean, it, there was a common thread through all of it, and it was, as I said, the simple preaching of the salvation message with dynamic responses. 
there, there was no, uh, uh, you know, primary focus on signs and wonders. There were signs and wonders, but no, the focus was on Jesus and salvation, people coming to faith in Christ for the first time in their lives in most cases. It was, it was, it was amazing. And it was very similar to the historic revivals that had happened all through the uh, 19th and 20th centuries elsewhere in the world and even in Africa. Wow. There was, you know, what touched me in this book is there was such a revelation of God's holiness. It was as if God was present. It's not like today when you see people just come into the church, they sing with us, they dance with us, and they live in sin. They even, and nothing touches them, nothing breaks them down. Uh, and this, this is something that we did so much. But Dr. Gary, tell me, why do you think this revival ended? What was the reason for it dying? Well, there, there were several reasons of the neo-Pentecostal movement. Well, the result was that there was a mass confusion and, uh, you know, disagreement, leadership tussles, false doctrines coming in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that, uh, that dispersing of the people and the launching of literally hundreds of uh, new little churches what was it was a tragic thing that led to the demise of the revival so there were there were many factors but i think those are two principal ones professor gary let's talk about pa Etin. your portrayal of pa Sidney elton uh, who is known as one of the main fathers of this revival uh was such that you showed that he was so crucial, he was at the center of this revival, but that he inadvertently, towards the end, also contributed to what slowed down this revival. Can you speak a bit about that? Well, thank you. Look, I have immense respect for the life and ministry of Paul Sidney Elton. Uh, he spent literally 50 years here in Nigeria, uh, and he was a very well regarded, though not necessarily the major uh, influence on the university scene, but he was a regular speaker on university campuses. However, uh, midway through this revival, actually uh, around 67, 68, uh, Paul Elton began to deliberately shift his focus in his preaching to now major on uh, the themes of Pentecostalism, and you have to bear in mind that at Independence, there were only 200,000 Pentecostals in the whole country. I mean, these people were hardly represented on university campuses. But he began to focus on the absolute necessity for people to be baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It became an extremely divisive, uh, message, uh, people began to choose sides. It, it's just very, very unfortunate. Uh, I don't think we need to divide over those kinds of issues, but it certainly happened. And then uh, at a point, uh, and you have to remember, Paul Elton was looked up to as a very, very highly regarded oracle of God. I mean, young people uh, flocked to his uh, Elisha home uh, to have him pray over them and prophesy over them. And uh, the, all of these older leaders that we have today, or many of them, were deeply influenced by Paul Elton. But he began to encourage the young man by the droves to leave your church, go and establish your own church. And so uh, it was well-intentioned, but I think it was one of the worst things that, uh, one of the worst advices he could have given. I had, I pray that he would have said, go back to your church and bring revival to your people. Uh, thank God that's what some of them did, but many, many, many of them did not. So I look at Paul Elton's contributions as a very mixed bag. Much of it was positive, but too much of it was, was negative. Now, some would argue that the introduction of Pentecostalism in Nigeria and across Africa is what led the church to grow. Yet you argue that the wrong emphasis on the gifts of the Holy Spirit is part of what slowed down the revival. Speak a bit into that. 
Well, look, I don't question the fact that the Pentecostal movement is, as you said, vibrant and growing. It is. But that's not the same as saying that it is biblically revived. What we have in Pentecostalism today in Nigeria is an awful high percentage of very, very shallow Christian living. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't see how people can easily deny that. Uh, the fact that you're growing uh, and that, that you're singing as loud as ever isn't a sign of biblical revival. What was happening in the Civil War was genuine to the core. These people were not posturing for anybody. In fact, they were just excited to be alive in Christ. Uh, so look, today we are, yes, the church is growing, but the church in Nigeria is exceedingly shallow. And uh, we need a fresh revival, no question about it. Thanks, uh, uh, Professor Gary. By the way, viewers, you can use the information on the screen to uh, order this book. Or uh, this book is available in Nigeria, but it's available on Amazon and available even in Kenya and some other countries. Use the contact on the screen now, Doctor Gary. This is something you deal with in the book. How uh, can we recapture? this lost vision. How can we recapture a revival like this today? Well, you, you know, uh, Peter Ozodo and I co-authored another book, The Seduction of the Nigerian Church, with the conviction that if Nigeria is to experience, once again, genuine revival, we need to first have a reformation in other words, the church has become bogged down with false teachings. We have imbibed a huge amount of false teaching, most of it from America. Number one, the Word of Faith movement and its teaching about uh, prosperity and the idea that God wants every single believer to be financially wealthy, which is just a a completely non-biblical teaching and everybody's now filled with greed and promise you know we need to have we need to get straightened out on some of these the uh, hyper grace movement uh, which has now entered many places in Nigeria so we need we need to have a reformation and then of course as you rightly said we need uh, to recognize our need so number one, recover our biblical foundations, uh, which is very, very important. When that, and, that, and that involves rejecting false teaching, recognizing it as false teaching. Uh, you know, it's interesting that the word of faith teaching in America uh, w was uh, formally rejected by the Assemblies of God and the Foursquare Gospel Churches. They cried out against it uh, many years ago. And they said, what Kenneth Hagin is teaching is not scriptural. Uh, and yet we have swallowed it hook, line, and sinker as though it's the basic gospel. We need to know how to move back to solid biblical foundations and then and by the way, it's, it's even affected the way we pray nowadays. We, 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 there's a lot of praying going on in Nigeria, but it's become much of it unscriptural. Uh, it, when I go to meetings today, I hear a lot of decreeing and commanding, you know, as though God now is on vacation and we are handling the job ourselves, you know. Uh, we used to say when people uh, at the end of the service pray to God, please keep our people safe as they travel home. We don't do that anymore. We say, I decree that there will be no accident. Uh, and we need to get back to sound scriptural teaching. And then we can see revival as we once again uh, go in repentance before God. Professor Gary, one thing I want you to talk about before we uh, start to close is uh, something you pointed out in the book. That is the fact that even though miracles and healings happened during this uh, Civil War revival, yet that was not the emphasis of the preaching. The emphasis 
of their ministry was on salvation, was on repentance, was on sanctification, and the need to walk with God in holiness. But miracles and all that happened by the side. Yet today we see that miracles, signs, prosperity has become the focus of many in the church. And you talked about this in the church, in the, in the book, that this is something that is a disorder. Speak a bit into this. Well, you're absolutely correct. And uh, we need to get some historical perspective on this. Uh, I, I, I mentioned prayer, for example. We need to understand how believers were praying 40 years ago. And the same thing applies to this issue of miracles. There was a major national shift in focus in the 1990s. I remember speaking to Bishop Francis Walioke. He said, I know exactly when... And I think he said 1992, and that is when the surely boiled or baked. But uh, be that as it's typical nowadays, we, we try to attract people with the promise of miracles. And even when, uh, I mean, uh, we have Reinhard Bonke crusades 10 years ago in which people, in which he would preach excellent, excellent sermons on salvation. And yet the people were, would be clamoring, clamoring, you know, hurry up, we want to see miracles. So, brother, we have gone off track and gotten off balance. The, the book of, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the scriptures, it says that there will be signs following, not, not miracles out in front. Uh, Jesus never talked that way. The early apostles didn't talk that way. Uh, miracles will be there. Hallelujah for them. So let's keep first things first. Oh, how I long for a revival, a mighty revival like this to sweep across not just Nigeria, but all of Africa. How we need it so badly. Professor Gary, please, can you tell viewers how they can get this book? The book is available uh, in many Christian bookshops, uh, Bible Wonderland, uh, Acts bookshops, and of course also from our headquarters at 59 Oduduwa Way, Keja GRA in Lagos. Uh, so it's in, it's in a number of bookshops. Uh, I know it's available in Kenya now, so those, those are some I know. Is it available online, Professor Gary? Um, you can Amazon.com. Amazon you can get both ebook and uh, hard copies. Yes, absolutely. Professor Gary, thank you so much for this book. Uh, what's your last word to our view viewers before you go? Well, look, I have great hope for revival. I have great hope for revival in Nigeria. I God gave me an assurance many, many years ago that I would live to see a genuinely national revival in Nigeria. Uh, Amen. I'm not sure we're much closer to it than we have been for a long time, but I haven't lost hope. So I, I would say, please, let's be serious. Uh, read good books on revival. I, I wrote another book, Why the Nigerian Revival Tarries. Uh, another one that's going to be coming out is entitled Africa Fire, which is uh, a, a reader of incredibly great things that have happened in African revivals over the last 200 years. Read, read the Bible, read good books on revival, and uh, pray for God to do something that will make this nation turn around. Okay, there you have it. I've been talking to Professor Gary X. Maxi, the author of the book, Capturing a Lost Vision. Uh, can, the Nigerian, can Nigeria's Greatest Revival Live Again? And this is a book you will want to get. It's, I couldn't put it down. Thank you so much, Dr. Gary. Amen. Thank you. Hi there, and welcome back. Wow. I do hope you could get that book, but this is where we'll be wrapping up for this week. Uh, and uh, we just want to thank you that join us every week. We also want to encourage you, if this show, show has been a blessing to you in any way, you might want to consider partnering with us by supporting this ministry. We continue to do this work through the support of people like you. Uh, 
Your gift to this ministry will help us continue to reach more people, challenge Christians to be sought and like for this uh, for the Lord in this continent. If you would like to do that, please use the contact on the screen and we'll let you know how you can send your gifts. And uh, to say thank you to you, I would like to send you a copy of my book, uh, God Gives His Children a Song. This is a book that has blessed people all across the world and we know it will bless you. Uh, use the contact on the screen, contact us today and we'd love to say thank you to you for partnering with us this way i would say bye bye for this week i'll see you same station same time next week god bless you bye please like this video and leave a comment below let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else